Northlake College was really excited. Um, the past two weeks we've had an exhibition of our art students artwork in Nepal in Kathmandu. Um, we took 25 of my current and former figure drawing students artwork and curated for the very very best pieces and then shipped them over to uh, Kathmandu where our good friend Kapil uh, Dixit took them and had them matted and framed and found a wonderful gallery in which to, ex uh, to show them. This was unusual, we understand, because it was the first international figure drawing exhibition in Nepal. Uh, that's showing the nude figure, something sort of outside, we understand, the culture of Nepal. So this was unusual and uh, maybe a, a, a little bit challenging for some of the viewers there. The figure drawing students of mine are from a variety of countries and a variety of ages and take my class for a whole variety of different purposes. Um, uh, in my class in figure drawing, we, we look at the, the human nude uh, and we look at for anatomy and we also look for experimental ways to address the figure. Um, maybe in the techniques we use or in the ideas that we use. In this particular exhibition there are several uh, of the paintings that were spray painted underneath. We took letters of the alphabet and laid them out on paper and spray painted and then took them back into the classroom and drew the figure on top of them. Um, and some you'll see like we, we spritzed a little bit of water on the paper and added charcoal to make little, little charcoal dots and then drew a figure on top. And sometimes the experimental pose, the experimental part was sort of a pose, like we had the model go into a real emotional stance and then they drew. There's one painting called Hunger um, in which the, the figure's all hunched over. Uh, sometimes I give them uh, a title and then they work from that title to create a piece. Uh, in the exhibition not only was there just pure beautiful charcoal work and beautiful graphite and pencil work, there was also things like a tissue paper glued on and pastel on top of that, or, you know, or, or bits of text or uh, a piece of electric tape or drippy ink. Included in the 25 pieces that we sent over, I put two of my small sketchbook drawings that I do alongside my students in class. One of the ways I like to motivate them is um, not only giving them assignments and telling them what to do, but I sit down and draw with them when they draw. And they seem to really like that. They like to watch me draw. And they, they kind of bounce off that idea and they're all in a creative environment. So I included two of my pieces. And Kapil Dixit, who I mentioned before, uh, who helped us arrange the uh, exhibit there, used to be one of my former students at, in, at North Lake, and now he's moved back to Nepal. And he put one of his pieces in. And then we also had two pieces by uh, Dr. Uh, Bob Seeley. He's one of our English professors here who also comes and takes classes from me. I believe it was received very well. I've seen, I think, four or five newspaper articles written in Nepal uh, that gave us very good feedback and we're trying to explain to the community about the use of the new tea and art in uh, you know, the work coming from the United States there. And it was very well received and I love seeing all that publicity and I really, my intent was to go and then we had the huge major 12 and a half inch snowstorm and my flight was canceled. But had I gone, um, I was going to give an artist talk and then speak at the opening, but the most exciting part that I was scheduled to give a figure drawing workshop. We had found a, uh, a nude model and we found a place to give it and the artists were going to come and have their first experience drawing the nude uh, and they were excited about it and I really wanted to meet them and hear, hear about their university experiences and see how they were taught to draw and then show them a little bit how I teach uh, figure drawing and I'm so disappointed I didn't get to do that and get to meet them because even though I was there to teach I was really there to learn a lot too about that culture and how they they see it. I, I don't know a whole lot about Nepal but we have about um, almost a thousand students here at North Lake who are Nepalese students and many of them have taken my art classes and they've shared with me the, the beauty of Nepal and the, the beautiful countryside and how much they love the country and they often bring me little, uh, they know I love jewelry so they often bring me pieces of jewelry to share about their country and so I, I've been fascinated about going to see it and tried to do a lot of reading in the tour guides and things like that before my trip got, got cancelled. Um, uh, I know with Kapil, he's 
shared with me his own artwork and the influences often with the um, Hindu influences, uh, you know, Ganesh and things like that. And then uh, he's he's given me some of his pieces, which have the Nepalese influence on them, and that are so wonderful to have. I have one hanging in my home and one hanging here in my office. Well, here at North Lake College, we've really enjoyed our students from Nepal, and I think we've been really successful at teaching them because we have almost a thousand um, students from Nepal enrolled right now. Uh, we found that we've sort of become a community. Uh, I don't know how it first started, but one student came, I guess, found North Lake to be a uh, a warm environment and then others began to come. Uh, the community college is a great place for uh, international students in that economically it's much less expensive than some of the state schools and we do provide the first two years of uh, university experience here. So w as we have gained more and more uh, students from Nepal, they have begun to form their own community which helps support them and they have people to talk to and help getting through the system and I'll walk down the halls and I'll hear them all talking in their native languages which is which is a lot of fun um, uh, and then they get to you know experience you know I know a, a radically different kind of culture but I think having so many here um, they're able to help each other and then we're used to working with them and in our international um, department at the school that helps students is used to working with uh, the students from Nepal also so we're able to I think we're getting a lot of support both ways and I know it's difficult to come to an, a new place and then try to support yourself at the same time you're going to school but we try to make it a good community for them. Where we get the the models that we draw from because in our classroom uh, a, a real human being comes in and you know, we lock the doors and they get up on the, the podium and they do pose nude for us. And so that is um, unusual for a lot of people to think about, even even Americans. Uh, and where do we get those models and where do they come from? Uh, there are several places. Uh, uh, other art teachers recommend people who do that and so we get recommendations. Many of them contact me. They love to model and so they they uh, contact me through email or the phone and I hire them that way. And there's also websites that are for, um, one of them's DFW art models, I think. Um, and you can look up their resume, find out, you know, what they look like and uh, email them that way. You know, there's a whole variety of kinds of people. Uh, often interesting they come a lot of them from health uh, professions like maybe they have another job and they model on the side and so I see like respiratory therapists and physical therapy or massage therapists people that are used to working with the body and anatomy and they're comfortable you know being nude because they're with nude people all day we get a lot of those and then we get some who who their whole day is spent modeling and they're so much fun because they tell me that at night they think of new poses. They really enjoy the athletic part of it and what would be interesting to look at. And um, some of them will bring like costumes that they also might wear during it or they bring in props. One of my models, all of a sudden she'll just come in one day and she'll have a ukulele with her or a big sword or something like that to, to model with and they, they enjoy it. It takes a lot of skill to be a model. Uh, because you have to stand very, very still for up to, you know, 30 minutes to half to 45 minutes without moving. Some of them are so good they don't even move their eyes. They just stare in one spot. I mean, they will have to blink, but they don't even move their eye. We develop a very long relationship with the models. I use the same ones over and over again because I need to trust that they're going to come on time and that they have professional, you know, standards when they model.